Well, good morning, Forward Church. It is so good to be together as the church. Whether you're meeting with us here in the building or online, we gather together to lift our voices and to honor a God who is worthy of our praise. Amen? Uh, I'm going to invite you to stand where you're at this morning to please join with us, lift your voices. We're going to be singing a new song this morning called House of the Lord. And there is joy in the house of the Lord when we recognize what he has done, what he has uh, given us in the hope and the freedom that we have in him. There is joy in this place. So let's lift our voices as we sing this new song together. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet, but we shout out of your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet, but we shout out of your praise. We shout out of your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise yeah. We were the beggars Now we're royalty We were the prisoners Now we're running free we are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Go. We were the prisoners, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Who we shout out of your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. Who we shout out of your praise. Who we shout out of your praise. Your praise. We shout out your praise. Give him praise this morning.
worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. Oh, see what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. do it again for your promises yes and amen you have do great things oh God you do great things oh heal of heaven you conquer the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh God you have done great Your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. God, you do great things. Oh God, you do great things. Yes, God, we thank you for the great and powerful and mighty things that you have done and continue to do in our lives. We look forward to eternity with you. What an amazing, powerful God you are. We thank you, Jesus. How I long to breathe the air of heaven where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets and to look upon the one who bled to save me and walk with him for all eternity and there will be a day when all will bow before him there will be a day 
when death will be no more standing face to face with he who died and rose again holy holy is the lord and every prayer we prayed in desperation the songs of faith we sang through doubt and fear and in the end you see that it was worth it when he returns to wipe away our tears there will be a day when all will bow before him there will be a day when death will be no more standing face to face with he who died and rose again holy holy is the lord and on that day we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith and with one voice a thousand generations sing worthy is the lamb who was slain and on that day we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith and with one voice a thousand generations sing worthy is the lamb who was slain Shout the hymn of heaven with angels and the saints. We raise a mighty roar. Glory to our God who gave us life beyond the grave. Holy, holy is the Lord. So let it be today. We shout the hymn of heaven. Saints, we raise a mighty roar. Glory to our God who gave us life beyond the grave. Holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy is the Lord. Holy. Father God, we just praise your name and we thank you that you are holy and that we can bow and worship you. Father, I just praise you and thank you that we could all gather together this morning here in the building. We just thank you for those you have brought back into the church and that we are able to gather and worship together. Father, what a joy it is to be part of this forward family and just here together this Sunday morning. Father, as we step into these new rhythms of fall, we ask that you would send the Holy Spirit to meet us here in this place, but not only would he meet us here, but would he fill this room and that we would just be overwhelmed by your goodness to us. And as we go out throughout the week, Father, I pray that we would not just be a people who gather here on a Sunday morning, but that we would be a people who share your word and spread the gospel to those we come in contact with. Father, as we enter into this new um, sermon series of everyday discipleship, we just ask that you would continue to speak to us where we are and that we would just be overwhelmed by your love and your 
uh, your goodness to us and uh, that you equip us to do the work that you have asked, to, to, asked us to do. So Father, I pray that we would be the hands and feet of Jesus and that we would go out into the world wherever you have called us to make disciples. Father, I thank you uh, today for Elizabeth Lauer and Stefan as they, they do the work that you have called them into. Father, we just thank you for uh, the work that Elizabeth is doing with the center and um, with the church in Cambodia. Father, we just uh, lift them up to you as her heart is heavy that she uh, cannot be there and ministering to those in uh, the prison uh, ministry that she cares so deeply about. Father, we just pray that the hands in Cambodia would be able to fulfill the work there still. Father, we ask for protection for those uh, who are in prison. Um, we just ask that you would uh, bring an end to COVID there and that you would be glorified and that your name would be glorified and praised even though the workers can't go like they used to. Father, we just continue to ask that you would sustain her in the ministry you have led her into and we just thank you for her heart and the work that she does. Uh, Father, I also ask today that you would be with Derek as he brings this message to us today, that we would be overwhelmed with the word that you have. I pray that we would leave changed, that we would not just sit here idly, but we would just be moved to do the work you have called us into. Father, we again thank you for today. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Um, just a quick announcement, as you may have known, we did um, a block party here uh, last Monday and it was a tremendous success. We were able to meet so many people from our community. So we wanted to first say thank you to all of you who volunteered um, for this event. We couldn't have done it without you. Um, but even more so, we just want to thank you for those who give generously to Forward Church each week um, and specifically through our Christmas offering. This was one of the events that we are able uh, to host and to run because of your generosity. So we just wanted to um, say thank you for all of you who uh, were a part of that. Um, we couldn't have done it without you. Now, uh, one more thing before we get started. Um, we're pretty full today, which is a wonderful problem to have, and I think we might have a few more people coming in. So if you are able, would you just move one seat closer uh, to the center of the row, and that way we can fit a few more people in um, who might be straggling behind, and that would be really great. Have a great morning, everyone. Thanks, Rachel. Oh, good morning, everyone. I know uh, all of you came to church this morning, and you were really hoping to hear about a communications update. Well, <laughs> probably not. But we have one for you, and at the end of this, you're going to say, yes, I do want to hear about communications updates, because we do this because we love you, and we want to make sure that we are connected as a community, and you know exactly where you can get connected in, and how you can uh, jump into different parts of your discipleship journey as well. And with the start of a new year, we wanted just to give you an update as to where things are at and what we're doing. Uh, when you came in this morning, uh, I think everyone was given a fall calendar. Uh, so please grab that if you can right now. Uh, there's three different ways that we, I want to highlight this morning. It's the fall calendar, uh, forward text, and the church center app. And starting with the fall calendar, this calendar gives you kind of a glimpse into uh, what we're hoping to do this fall. And at Forward Church, we are all about making disciples who love God, love others, and serve the world. And so there's various ways within that calendar that you can dive in. And on the front page there, uh, it says, you know, being a disciple of Jesus is a way of life. Uh, we want you to love God, love others, and serve the world. And if you're not plugged into one of our discipleship teams or serve team um, or are giving right now, we'd love for you to take that first step. So on the bottom of that, uh, we want you to take it home with you and read through it and see where you can jump in. Uh, but we, we have a line at the bottom there that says, that my discipleship goals between now and Christmas is this. So please take this home, look at all the different opportunities that are available to you there, um, and, and see if there's somewhere that you can kind of plug in this fall uh, to, to help you in your discipleship journey as 
well. Now I'm gonna help give a little context as to how you can do that because we've introduced a few different methods this last, a few new different methods this last year and we just wanna bring clarity to that. As you open that, you'll notice there's all these little text bubbles and you hear on our announcement, please text the word this to that number. And so first thing I wanted to highlight was text in church. Now I know all of you came this morning with a, not all of you, but many of you came this morning with a phone in your pocket. Now is a great time to pull that phone out. What I would love you to do is open your contacts, create a new contact called Forward Church, and put in that number 226-212-7117. 226-212-7117. And anytime you're needing something from the church, you can use that text number, but the easiest way is just to use one of our text words. So all of those words in the calendar that are in little bubbles, if you just text that singular word, It'll take you, it will send you to a form or to a registration event or give you a little bit more information on that. As you can see on the screenshot there, if you text the word baptism as an example, we'll send you right to our baptism registration so that you can sign up for our next baptism service. Or if you're new with us, just just, uh, text the word connect and it will uh, connect you in with our connect card online as well. And uh, that is a great way for us to start this uh, journey with you and get connected with you as well. So that's our text number, 226 7117. Now don't put your phones away. I know often you feel like you need to at church, but here you can have them out both for the Bible app and text in church, as well as the Ford uh, Church Center app. And uh, uh, we've uh, introduced this over the last year. It's really one of the easiest ways to register for events and connect with different parts of our church. So uh, if you go to uh, the, either the App Store, the Apple App Store, or the Google Play Store, you can find it there. I'm going to throw up the next slide here. It has two large QR codes. Um, now, if you don't know what those are, you can open the camera app on your phone if you've got a, a, a modern phone. If you've still got your flip phone, this is going to be difficult. Um, but you can open the camera app on your phone, point it at the screen there, and it should show you a link to either one of those app stores. And you'll also see that in our announcements. If, you wanna, if you're sitting there and something strikes you in announcements that you want to connect with, just point it at the screen and it should give you a quick link in there as well. But that'll take you to the store where you can download the app. Now, some of the things I wanted to highlight for you on the app that you're able to do and makes life really easy. Um, the best part is once you log in with your profile uh, here at the church, you're logged in and you don't have to keep putting that in every time you register for church. So uh, on the front page, you can just click the register here for either our Kitchener or Cambridge services, and it'll uh, give you a quick, easy way to register. Uh, If you're part of one of our discipleship groups or our serve team groups, um, you'll you'll be able to find your groups on the app there, and we have opportunity for you to message with the people in your uh, discipleship groups, uh, and you'll be able to see different event times and that kind of thing in there as well. Um, and then you're, the, the, the biggest feature that I find most helpful for myself, because I'm always that one on Saturday night, did I register for church? I can't remember, is registrations. Just open the app. You're logged in. You're ready to go. You can register for our services and all the other things. There's a couple, you know, registrations for baptism and cap money courses and our first steps experience. Anything that's kind of happening in the life of the church at the moment is available under registration. So you can jump in there. Uh, The next tab is our Quick Links tab, and that's going to give you access to uh, short, quick links to like the Rewind podcast. Uh, If you want to sign up for discipleship groups, we'd love for you to sign up for one today. So load the app, click on that button there, and it will give you an opportunity to sign up for discipleship groups and serve teams and see what's happening on the one degree shift. And then lastly, it's an easy way to give as well. And so you can just put your your, uh, information there and and, uh, give to the church. Now, if you're ever wondering how to update your information, uh, just click the button on the top right of the app there, and you'll be able to update your information. You can see my beautiful family there on the screenshot. Uh, you'll be able to see your household and, and make sure that your information is up to date there as well. So today I just shared with you our fall calendar. Make sure you uh, check and see what you would love to be a part of this fall. We're not expecting you to come to every single one of those events. You would have a very, very busy fall. But pick the ones that would really uh, suit you and your discipleship journey at the moment and, and something that you can plug into. And we'd love for you to pray over where that
that would be. Um, forward text and the church center app. Now, I do put a caveat in there because there are people still with flip phones and hard lines, uh, landlines. So you can always call our church office if you've got any questions and we would love to help you with this or just help you register for an event as well. So don't feel like you're lost. If you don't have the app and you don't have text, please call the office. We love to hear from you. And... Uh, we just hope that you're able to, to jump in and join with us this fall and grow in, uh, as, as we become disciples who love God, love others, and serve the world. Thanks, church. Hey, everyone. It's Blair. I am so glad that you're joining us this Sunday online or in person. If you're new here and want to connect with us, fill out one of our connection cards by texting CONNECT to 226-212-7117 or scan the code. A great first step you can take here at Forward is membership. If you're interested, be sure to text membership or scan the QR code for a link to find out more about membership at Forward Church. If you're already a member or just want to see what the next steps you can take with us are, see what's happening this week. Hey Forward Women, our new year will be opening with the study of Truth Filled by Ruth Chow Simons. Through this seven-week course, we will be taken through the book of Colossians and discover how to find true satisfaction in God. This is a great opportunity to grow in faith and in community. If you'd like to sign up for the weekly course, which starts on October 7th, please text WOMEN to 226-212-7117 or scan the QR code. See you there. Hey parents, we will be holding our Parents Cafe for parents with children from birth to grade 12 entering our Forward Youth and Forward Kids programs. We'll be sharing what our programs will look like this year, providing resources and equipping you to disciple your children. It will be held on September 15th at 7 p.m. where we can provide you with all the information on how your kids can love others during this upcoming school year. If you want to sign up and attend the cafe, text CAFE to 226-212-7117 or scan the QR code. And if you're entering youth in grade six, be sure to join us for our junior high snapshot before the Parent Cafe takes place at 6.15 p.m. It's designed to help show you what youth is really like as we enter the school year. You'll get a chance to meet some junior high leaders and get a taste of what happens on a regular youth night. If you wanna sign up and attend the snapshot, text snapshot to 226-212-7117 or scan the QR code. See you there. Hey men, I want to ask every single man who is part of Forward to be part of our men's event on September 18th. I want to share with you a message that I believe is so important for us as men in these uncertain times. We're going to be having a delicious pulled pork dinner together and we're going to learn more about opportunities for you to grow as a man who loves God, loves others, and serves the world. Register by texting MEN to 226-212-7117 or scan the QR code. Hope to see you there. And that's all you need to know for this week. You can find all our announcements and events on our website at forwardchurch.ca. The easiest way to register is on our Church Center app. Stay connected with us throughout the week by following us on Facebook or Instagram. Now let's prepare our hearts for today's message. Have a great morning. Good morning, church. You know, it's a magical time of year. This is a special, special weekend because it's NFL football season. It is maybe my favorite time of year, and 
I got to enjoy Thursday night watching my Cowboys lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But as I was watching, I saw Tom Brady on the field and I had uh, just a, a recognition come across me. I've still got time to make my football dream come true. I've got about three years left in my window. If Tom can be playing at 44, I can get out there. Uh, and as I was watching football, I, I, whenever I watch football, I do think back to my days of playing football. Football's an interesting sport because kind of when you're done playing, uh, whether that's at a high school level or a college level, you don't get to really play that way again. It's not like uh, baseball where you can go play in a men's league softball or, or hockey where you can uh, go out and still continue to be creaky out on the ice. You're done. You're done. But as I was thinking back to when I was playing, I thought about a time that I had totally forgotten about in, in playing high school football. And we were playing for the championship, and we had got up 20 to nothing in the first half. And we felt like we were just cruising. Halftime came, and before you knew it, we were down 21-20. Uh, the end of the fourth quarter came. We were going to have the last chance to touch the football. And we, we were backed up way on our own end. We started working our way down the field, ran out of timeouts, and our coaches realized, hey, there's no way we're getting this ball to the end zone. If you've ever watched high school football in Canada, you'll also realize uh, most people can't kick. So we weren't going to rely on a field goal to kick, uh, a kicker to kick a field goal. So all of a sudden we were like, what are we, what are we going to do? What's the play? And they sent in the kicker, and we thought, oh, no, this game's over. And then the kicker said, hey, here's what we're going to do, guys. The coach has said, we're going to kick a rouge. And that was about the sound in the huddle as well, because... All of us had grown up watching real football, not CFL football. And we had no idea what a rouge was. It was just confusion. Uh, but a rouge is like if you, it's such a weird rule. You get one point if you kick it into the end zone, the other team gets it, and they don't get out of the end zone. We had no clue. So the kicker is trying to explain it to us. Everything's on the line. We got to kick a rouge. This is our mission from the coach. And as you can imagine, it just ended up in total failure and chaos. And there was a bunch of teenage boys crying on the field afterwards. Now, if, if you're wondering what any of this has to do with Jesus this morning, well, here's, here's how this fits in. See, just as our coach had given us a very specific mission, kick a rouge, in order to try and tie up the game, Jesus has given his team, his church, a very clear mission. And if you've been around Forward Church at all, <laughs> If you've been here this morning, I hope you've picked up on it. It's to make disciples. But if we don't know what a disciple is, we're going to end up very much like we were on that football field 20 plus years ago, 25 years ago, where we're just confused and frustrated. Here's where we get these instructions from Jesus. He has Jesus before, as he gets ready to ascend into heaven, in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, we read that Jesus came and said to them, that is his disciples who have gathered together with him, his, his closest followers, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Now, these verses have been used to to give a charge to God's people for all sorts of things. They've been used to charge people towards teaching and towards baptizing and towards going overseas or going into your neighborhood. And all those things are great things, but there's actually only one command in this whole section of Scripture, and that is make disciples. Make disciples. And church... And we are the church. Like, this building is not the church, but, but the people of God, that's the church. That's our call. That's our call. That's, that's the call of all churches. That's the call of the, the church as in the whole of the saved, redeemed people of Jesus. And we can get involved in a lot of stuff, in a lot of activities, right? We get involved in in feeding the hungry. We can get involved in, in programming for kids and for teens and for seniors and for young adults and for men and for women. 
We, we can get involved in, in, in overseas mission or mission around the block and running camps and block parties. We can get busy connecting people together. But if we don't get busy in making disciples, we are failing at the mission that we've been given. If all of those things aren't a part of, don't come under the umbrella of making disciples, we're missing the point. We are... And if we don't know what a disciple is, we're never going to be able to execute the mission. And so thankfully, Jesus doesn't just tell us to make disciples and then leave us to try and figure out what it is. He doesn't send a kicker in and say, kick a rouge, and we all stand around looking at each other. He actually tells us what it means to make disciples. And so what I want us to see this morning is what Jesus tells us disciples are. The disciples are adopted, obedient imitators of Jesus empowered by the Spirit on a mission of multiplication. Listen to that one more time. We're going to break this down and walk through this, but disciples are adopted, obedient, imitators of Jesus who are empowered on a mission to go out into the world and multiply more disciples. And he starts this this charge to make disciples by saying, go therefore and make disciples. And then he gets to the next part where he starts to unpack, okay, what does that look like? And he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And this is where we see that the disciples are, are adopted. Disciples are those who are adopted into the family of God, who have been brought into the family of God, and and they're given this new identity as they enter into a new family. Do you know, in, in Jewish culture, you were identified by who your father was, that that was a, a huge part of your identity, and that's why you would maybe know if you've kind of been around in church for a while, you've heard of James and John, and you might even know that James and John were known as the sons of Zebedee. Or maybe you know that oftentimes Joshua is referred to in the Old Testament as Joshua, son of Nun. And even Jesus himself, when, when people were talking about Jesus and, and couldn't believe what Jesus was doing, they, they stated, is that Jesus Son of Joseph? How, how, could, how could Jesus, son of Joseph, like if his identity is just the son of a carpenter, how could he be doing these things? And when we're baptized, we are baptized into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We're baptized into the Trinity, into God, in, and, and beyond that, into a family of faith, that we're baptized collectively into something. And we're gonna see in a second that that yes, just critical and embedded in the, in the idea and nature of discipleship is the idea of doing, but foundational before our doing is that we have to understand our being. We have to understand who we are. And we are going to be in big, big trouble if we jump into discipleship and skip over the part of our identity, of, the, of our adoption. Because baptism is fundamentally a external symbol of an internal reality, right? So some of you are Leafs fans. You're looking forward to another year of heartbreak and disappointment ahead. I understand as a Cowboys fan. I'm there with you. But let, me, let, me, let me put this into context for you, you who are Leafs fans. Austin Matthews is a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. That happened when he signed a contract. He doesn't become or not become a member of the Maple Leafs when he puts on or takes off his jersey. Now, he put on his jersey to symbolize that he is a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Like, if I put on a Leafs jersey, I'm still not a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I know because I look at my paycheck. So, you put on a Maple Leaf jersey, that's fine, but that doesn't make you part of the team. It's the fact that he is a part of the team, that's why he puts on the jersey. And then when he puts on the jersey, that's a public symbol identifying himself as to what part of the team, what, what team he belongs to. And in the same way, baptism does not save you. It doesn't make you a disciple, a follower of Jesus, a Christian. It's a public declaration that Jesus has already saved you. 
And you're declaring to the world, this is who I am. This is my identity. When I receive what Jesus has done for me, that God received me into his family and made me a child of God because his son died on the cross for me and I am given all of the benefits of his sonship when I trust in him and his goodness and his perfection, his death on the cross. Ephesians 1.5 says that he chose us for adoption as sons and daughters through Jesus. That's the reality that takes place when I place my faith in Jesus. Then he gives me a new name and a new identity and then I get baptized to reflect that out and to let people know that's who I am. To let the rest of the world know what has taken place internally. I shout it out externally through baptism. And this is so important because when we understand who we are, when we understand our identity, when we're defined by what Jesus has done for us, we're no longer defined by what we do, right? Because all of a sudden, it's not about what you have done in the past. It's about what Jesus has done for you in the past. It's not what you do do in the future. It's not about what you've accomplished. It's about what Christ has accomplished for you. All of a sudden, identity isn't isn't something that you have to, to build and to work out and to figure out and to construct. It's given to you by God Through Christ. When you get baptized, you're just declaring that this is who I am to the world. You are saying, by God's grace, I am adopted as a child of God into the family. And I would say to you this, if that's who you are, if you have been adopted, you say, yeah, I've placed my faith in Christ. I know that I'm saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. I declare that. Then if you haven't declared that publicly through baptism, you need to do that. You need to do that. That is not a later step. That is a first step of discipleship. And and this is important because this symbol of the first element of your identity, it's also the first step into the next element of being a disciple, which is your obedience. See, disciples are obedient. Jesus says, go and make disciples. Invite them in to this incredibly good news that Jesus has died for them and and have them declare that to the world that that's where their faith is. And then he says, teach them to observe all that I have commanded you, of which baptism is a part. And and, and just to let you know, we are gonna do a baptism service at the end of this series. So you got time. You got three weeks here. Sign up and get baptized. But Obedience is part and parcel of what it means to be a disciple. Conversion is the front end. It's the very first thing. Becoming adopted into the family of faith. Placing your faith in Jesus. That's the start of the discipleship journey. But Jesus says you need to be obedient. And if you're going to be obedient, there's a couple things here. First, you have to be a learner. You have to be a learner. Jesus says The one who is discipling must teach others to obey everything that he's commanded. But that means that the one who is being discipled has to receive that. They have to learn that. The more you understand who Jesus is and and what he's done for you, and the more that a desire should grow in your heart to learn more about what it means to walk in his ways, the more you see his goodness the more you should want to experience that goodness, right? And so you should have a desire to learn the teachings and the commandments of Jesus. That's what's marked being a disciple since the very beginning of the church. If you look at Acts 2, the the day of Pentecost, the day kind of the, the church was founded. At the end, after Peter has preached his message and thousands have been converted, been adopted into the family. It says this, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. See, after they came to know Christ and came into the family of God, what they wanted to do is they wanted to learn more. They wanted to grow more. And I would say, we're in this season in the church. I'm not talking about forward church. I'm talking about the church writ large, especially in North America, where there are 
far too many people who claim to follow Jesus who are not dedicated learners. There's just no interest in, in learning. There is a, this is a staggering lack of biblical literacy in our churches, and it is not for lack of information. We've never had more information. There's never been more books. It's never been more easily accessible to, to listen to a podcast, to open your Bible in any version, wherever, and yet we've got this stunning lack of biblical knowledge. We have, we have churches full of people who can quote all sorts of song lyrics and TV shows and movies, but they can't, they can't tell you a verse out of Scripture. And I think part of this is there's this danger that so many of us have become kind of disciples by proxy, that we can quote what maybe even somebody else writes about the Bible or somebody else said on a podcast or on a YouTube video we were talking about. But, but we aren't reading it for ourselves. We're not opening God's word and digging into it for ourselves. We're, we're, we're learners by association. We can't be learners by association. Listen, one of the great blessings to me, I came back and I heard about just, this is not new information to me. I came back from vacation to hear how blessed we are as a church with so many great Bible teachers. And I wholeheartedly agree. Like church, you are blessed. But it is, it is not enough for Pastor Kirk or Pastor Derek or, or, or Kevin or Andrew or Rachel or Brittany to, to dig into God's word and deliver it to you. You gotta learn to dig in God's word for yourself to be a learner. See, one of the things that disciples do is they disciple, right? Like if you're gonna obey everything that God has commanded and that Jesus has commanded, what does he command them? Go and make disciples. So you're gonna have to become a discipler. You are called to teach others about Jesus. And you can't be a teacher unless you're a learner. Like parents, you learned this last year, right? Some of you found yourself in the very unexpected spot of becoming teachers to your kids. And all of a sudden, you were scrambling because you were having to help them learn stuff that you had forgotten or didn't yet know, and you know how well that works. And listen, you've got family members, friends, coworkers, neighbors who need to learn about God. And you need to know about Jesus so you can relate what you have learned about Jesus to them. Not, not, not to bring them to somebody else. You can't be a learner by proxy. Even more obvious than this whole idea of like, if you're gonna teach, you gotta know, is that it's not just about learning. Being obedient is about learning so we can live. It's not just about storing up knowledge about stuff. Disciples are committed to obedience. They want to learn not just because it's interesting or entertaining or so that they can feel smarter or so they can feel religiously superior to somebody else. No, we want to we learn so we can live. That's what we're called to do. A disciple is one who is called to learn so that they can obey Jesus in all that he commands. In all of it. Not, not just in the parts that we like, not just in the parts we're familiar with, not just in the parts that we're comfortable with or the parts that are easy. No, a disciple is one who learns to obey Jesus in everything which covers all areas of life. A disciple of Jesus is one who is, who is committing themselves to take every decision and every action and every belief every mental map that we develop and run it through the lens of what does God have to say about this? Listen, if you don't get anything else this morning, I really hope that you hear this. See, I don't, I don't know all of you. I don't, I don't know where your faith is at. I don't know if you're 
somebody who would define themselves as a disciple of Jesus at all. But I know this, you're a disciple of something, someone, because everyone is a disciple of something. You have been and are being shaped. You have been molded. You are being taught. You are being influenced by something. Every single one of us. You can just throw the faith stuff out. This is just true of you. You have beliefs and morals and ethics and values, and they have been developed from somewhere, even if you can't tell me where they come from. The other day, I was driving along, and I saw a yard sign. And the yard sign said this. Maybe you've seen a sign that that sounds very similar. In this house, we believe that black lives matter, love is love, women's rights are human rights, we are all immigrants, diversity makes us stronger. I'm not going to comment at all about what I believe or don't believe is true about those things. That's, That's irrelevant. What I want you to see is that's a creed. That is a statement of beliefs. This is someone planting their flag and saying, these are my beliefs. This this is the framework that I run things through. And we all have that. The only question is, who's shaping that? Where's that coming from? See, other people, one of the, the creeds that has become obvious to me that many people have is that personal freedom is the highest value. There's nothing more important than my personal freedom and autonomy. And and that's a belief. The question that we have to ask ourselves if we're being discipled by Jesus is, are those Jesus-centered beliefs or are those those beliefs that we're being shaped by other people in other places? See, the foundational belief and creed for a disciple and a follower of Jesus is that God is God. Jesus is Savior and Lord. The Bible is God's word and everything else is going to funnel through that. I'm going to put everything else that I think, that I believe, that social media tells me, that culture teaches, I'm going to put that under submission to the reality that Jesus is Savior and Lord and that his word is what's going to guide me. And when we commit to being obedient and to learn the commands of Jesus and to live accordingly, you know what starts to happen? We start to look more like Jesus. Because disciples are obedient imitators. See, Luke 6, 40, Jesus talks to his disciples, and one of the things he wants to tell them about his disciples, what what it means to be a disciple is this. A disciple, he says, is not above his teacher. But everyone, when they are fully trained, will be like their teacher. My obedience as a disciple leads to my imitation of the one who I'm being discipled by. I, as a parent, I often have times where I look at my kids <laughs> and a behavior comes out or, or a look on their face or words that come out of their mouth. And sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's really bad, but almost always I say, oh, I know where that came from. I know exactly where they got that from. Some of us need to do a little self-examination about who we're really being discipled by. And one of the best ways that we can get honest with ourselves is by asking the question, who do I look like? See, if anger rules your life, I would argue to you that you are primarily being discipled by a teacher that is not Jesus. If, if materialism rules your life, and I'm, not, I'm just ta- not just talking materialism, it's not just about the pursuit of wealth. It's about living as if the physical reality is the ultimate and most important reality. Living for here and for now, you're not being discipled by Jesus. You're being discipled by other influences. If unforgiveness rules your life, if self-righteousness rules your life, or if on the other end, if you shrug off sin and don't care about holiness, those are the realities that are showing up in you. You have to ask yourself, who are you really being discipled, trained, shaped by, influenced by? 
It's the goal of the disciple is that you would look more like the teacher. And so the goal of the disciple of Jesus is that we would look, live, and love more like Jesus. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a process. But if, that's not, if you can't look back one year ago and say, you know what, I think I look, live, and love more like Jesus now than I did then, then you're being discipled and influenced and shaped by something other than Jesus. Because that's the best way to measure your growth as a disciple is how much you resemble your Savior. Now here's the problem, right? Being like Jesus is impossible. (laughs) You're like, have you ever read the Gospels, Pastor? Like, I can try, but I can't look like that guy. You know, it's kind of like, I, I, I love basketball, but I don't care if LeBron James was my personal coach and trainer. I, my game is in no way ever going to look like LeBron's game. It does, it does not matter. My problem is I'm 5'11", not 6'6", six, six, Right? Uh, I'm not nearly as athletic. I don't have a jump shot, so that's a big one. But, but this is the good news for us. See, disciples of Jesus are adopted, obedient imitators who are empowered. We, we, we have to know this part. Jesus finishes off his charge to the disciples with, with this great promise to them. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Like part of the incredible news for everyone who wants to be a disciple of Jesus and grow into Christ-likeness is that God just doesn't call us to, to follow Jesus. He empowers us to be like Jesus. That's incredible. You, you aren't alone in that. Jesus doesn't leave us alone in this. If if. Being a disciple of Jesus meant that you just had to try really hard to be like Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. You are sunk. You're sunk. The cap on my ability to become like Christ is even greater than the cap on my ability to become like LeBron. It's an even more impossible standard. Listen, it's just like I might be able to improve my jump shot a little bit. You might be able to get a little nicer a little kinder. But be like Christ, man, that's a whole other level. Because I don't just need to be a little bit nicer and a little bit kinder. What I need is to be changed from the inside out. I need to, to grow in selflessness and grace and faith and love that is, is beyond me and who I am in my flesh. That's why I love the fact that Jesus says, I'm going to be with you always, even to the end of the age. And then we see even more clearly in Acts 1.8, as he departs this earth, what he means, what, what this power is. He says, well, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. If you are sitting there and just thinking, there are areas of my life, there are relationships in my life where I can't act and be like Jesus, you are right on your own. You can't, you will fail. But if you have been adopted by the Father, then you have been empowered by the Spirit to be like the Son. The same power that saved you will sanctify you. And listen, if God can take you from death to life, then he can fix those relationships. He can overcome addiction in your life. He can help you get past those sins that just keep on crushing you. If he has the power to take you from death to life, surely he has the power to take you from bitter to joyful. If he has the power to take you from death to life, he has to have the power to take you from selfish to sacrificial. If he has the power to take you from death to life, he has the power to take you from loathing someone to loving someone. He has the power to take us from cowardly to courageous. 
So as disciples, we can live out the mission we've been called to because we're not just adopted, obedient imitators who are empowered, but we are empowered to be on mission. The disciples are on mission, and it's a mission of multiplication. See, the mission of every disciple is to make disciples. It's every disciple mission. It's not a missionary mission. It's not a pastor mission. It's not a super Christian mission. It is a disciple of Jesus' mission to be on mission to make disciples. There are people who are lost and dying that are in your sphere of influence that God wants to use you to rescue and to save and to lead them from death to life. That's an unbelievable mission you've got called into. Man, that should be exciting. We should walk out of this place pumped up because we have been invited into the most important mission in the universe. There are people that need you to teach them about the grace and mercy and forgiveness of God through Jesus. They don't need Derek or Kirk or Brittany or Rachel or Kevin or Andrew or any of the rest of our staff, Neil, Daryl. They, they need you. And our job is to equip you to be ready to meet that challenge. Maybe you're saying, well, I don't know what to say. What do I say? Like, it's very uncomfortable. I get really awkward. I fumble around in, with my words. That's why you need to be learning. People grow. Do you know this? This is, uh, Larry Osborne said this once in a little session I was in with him. And he has stuck in my head ever since because it's so right. People grow on a need to grow basis. People grow on a need to grow basis. That is, you will only grow when you have to grow. <laughs> And the reason that some of you have stopped learning and stopped growing is because you stopped going. You've stopped going. You stopped looking. You're not looking for the opportunity to disciple other people and to share the gospel with other people. And you said, well, but, but so it's, it's going to be uncomfortable, Pastor, and it's going to be hard. Yep. I don't, I don't know where you got any other idea. It certainly wasn't from Jesus. Look what Jesus says in Luke 9, 23. Then he said to them all, this is, this is how you win friends and influence people and grow a church. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be a disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. Hey, listen. I think we're always meant and, and encouraged to count the cost. So I want to tell you this. There is a cost to being a disciple of Jesus. To be a disciple of Jesus means you're going to start living with you not being at the center of your life anymore. You're going to live a life that's centered around a love for God and a love for others. And that's not like a... It's not like a straight line or one-time deal. Like every day, he says, you're going to have to pick up your cross because every day you're going to be tempted to go back to putting yourself at the center of your life. So every day you're going to have to come back and say, okay, God, I'm living for you and I'm loving others. That's what today's, that's what today's about because this is the mission you've called me into. You become a disciple of Jesus by recognizing and receiving what Jesus did for you by dying on the cross, but you grow as a disciple of Jesus by you picking up your cross every day and choosing to die to yourself. And, and, and when we die to ourselves, hey, that's hard because that means choosing the truth even when lying would be easier. It means pursuing reconciliation despite the fact that I'd much rather run away from that relationship. It means being more concerned with the fact that there are people around you headed to hell than uncomfortable about talking about Jesus. But listen, listen. Jesus didn't end his words to his disciples there. What he wanted them to know is that the cost of being a disciple pales in comparison to the reward. He says, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. For what good is it if someone were to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very soul or their very self? 
Living for Jesus means dying to self, but living for yourself means dying forever. Living for yourself means dying forever, means hell. But living for Jesus is a promise of life eternal. To be a disciple starts with recognizing that Jesus died so that you could live with him. He died so you didn't have to. That's, but that's the starting point. It's not the end. Some people, like some of you have been running this race of, of being a disciple and following Jesus for 20 years and you haven't left the starting point. You're still at the beginning of the race because that's just the beginning. The rest is dying to yourself daily, picking up your cross and learning to be obedient imitators of him as he empowers you. And that's not something we can do on our own. But when we have been adopted by God into his family, he never leaves us alone. He gives us his spirit. He invites us into his mission of making disciples. And listen, listen. As we die to ourselves, here's what I've found time and time again. We find that we, we are dying to, we have clung so hard to, it never led to the life and flourishing that we wanted in the first place. In fact, it was the thing that was killing us. See, here's, here's Forward Church, here's our call. And here's the only thing that I want to be involved with. So, like, this is, this is where we have to be and where we have to go as a church. If we're going to do anything other, like, I'm, I just don't want to waste my time. I'm not interested in wasting my time doing Sunday services to entertain people. I'm not interested in wasting time running programming so that kids are occupied. Because we got a real mission to be on. We don't have time to be messing around with stuff that isn't on mission. Our mission and our privilege, what we are called to be all about is to be disciples who are adopted, obedient imitators, who are empowered on a mission to make more disciples. And I, and I just want to put this before you. You gotta decide whether you're in. If, if that is something that you wanna give your life to and be a part of, not, not part way in and part way, like are you in? Because that's what Jesus has called you to. Let's pray. Father, we thank you Thank you for your grace upon us that you would choose us who are so unworthy, unable, unlovely, and you would choose us to be part of your family. You would adopt us as your kids. You would extend the invitation through Christ to enter from death to life. And then you would invite us in on this mission, this lifelong journey of growing in obedience and imitation of Christ as we go out empowered to make disciples, to help other people move from death to life, to move from where we, we were to where we are. God, there is, there's, there's nothing else really that matters in the end. So God, would you use us Father, I'm praying that as a church, you would bend and break our hearts to this. You would show us the areas where we've been busy doing all sorts of other things. We've been shaped by all sorts of other forces. You know, we've been failing in the mission to go and make disciples of all people, wherever you place us and wherever you send us. God, I'm praying for this year as we enter into this new church year that this would be a year where we would get serious about disciple making individually and as a church and that we would see a great harvest as we lean into your spirits leading and empowering. Ask this in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stand together as we recognize the great hope that we have in Jesus.
How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages stepped down from glory to where my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior i'm yours forever jesus christ my living its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken in every chain there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living Lord then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe and out the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me amen came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Oh, Jesus, yours is the victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Sin's grip on me, you have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living oh, oh hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. Every chain that's out. 